Um, I'd like to say hello to everyone, both online and offline. Um, and welcome to our next uh, session called Language and Knowledge. Um, yesterday, we've heard a bit about um, transformers. So our uh, first presentation is going to be about um, transformers for uh, recommender systems, uh, more specifically on the topic of bri bridging the gap between NLP and sequential session-based recommendation. Um, the first presentation is going to be remote by Gabriel de Souza Pereira Moreira, I hope I got that right, from NVIDIA. Um, and if you can hear us, um, ready when you are. And, sorry. Good morning, can you hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. So uh, I'm excited to share this work by the research team at NVIDIA. My name's Eben Oldbridge. Um, I'm the, the lead of the Merlin team at NVIDIA, and this is joint work by Gabrielle, who's also going to be presenting later, uh, Sarah Rabi, Jungmin Lee, who is an intern with us, uh, Renai Ak, and of course, you know, this is work done by a, a large group of people at NVIDIA who help support um, the Merlin team is, you know, is, is a, a larger group of people than, than just this, this research set. So Transformers for REC is a flexible and efficient open source library. It's designed for sequential and session-based recommendation um, and is available for both PyTorch and TensorFlow. It builds on top of the Hugging Face Transformer library. And the idea here is to make state-of-the-art research happening in NLP available to researchers in the Rexus community. Part of the motivation behind this talk was you know, looking at the history behind recommendation and it's it's sort of patterned off of NLP. And so, you know, when we took a look at, at you know, word to vec leading to prod to vec, GRU leading to GRU for rec, attention leading to NARM and BERT leading to BERT for rec, you know, we, we figured this year there may be an XLNet for rec or a GPT-2 for rec, we haven't seen that yet. But, um, but really, you know, you see this pattern of ideas happening within the NLP space where there's, you know, a thousand times more research happening um, than, than happens in the Rexus space. And then, you know, the, that idea of being transferred into Rexus. And so we wanted to create a library that enables easy research and experimentation, as well as practitioners to explore the library in terms of a, a, a real world setting. So Transformers for Rec tackles sequential and session-based recommendation. Um, there's not enough time to cover that topic here. And so I'm gonna leave it to you to do the research if you haven't already to understand, you know, that, that task. But the core idea is that, you know, a sequence of user interactions will lead to a sequence of predicted next items. This is an example reference architecture. So there's a lot of different things you can do with a library, including multi-tower networks, multi-objective functions. But at, at its core, the library is designed to take in uh, a sequence of interactions from users. And that includes the, the, the sort of the common side information that's found in the recommender system space. So you know, we, we take in items, we take in categorical features and continuous features and process those in the first layer, the feature processing module at the bottom of this diagram here. And that gets packaged up into what we call an interaction layer so that, or an interaction embedding. So that interaction embedding is then sort of fed in sequence to the transformer blocks that you see within, within the Hugging Face library. And, and there's a number of different you know, transformers that are accessible. And like I said, you can, you can feed multiple, you know, multiple towers potentially at the same time. So those transformer blocks feed the predictions onto the output layer. And one of the key features and one of the things we've tried to build into the library is a set of best practices that help you know, improve performance. So things like uh, layer normalization is one of the common things that happens within the Rexus space or sorry, within the NLP space to, to help optimize transformers. Similarly, tied embeddings, which, which sort of tie the output layer to the input ID um, or to the item ID, create a, a sort of a cross product relationship um, and, and you know, are, are critical we found in terms of providing good performance within, within the recommender system space. So Rec Transformers for Rec is, a, you know, is multi framework. Like I said, it's, it's designed to be easy to use. Uh, here's some example, PyTorch code on the left and TensorFlow on the right. Um, and really, you know, you're, you're just defining the, the architecture in a straightforward way, we have the concept of sort of the, the model inputs, the model body, and then the model head. Um, and, and you can use that to define your, your system. Um, 
I'm going to hand this off now to Gabrielle, my, my co-author, to, to, oh, sorry, we're, we're almost there. Um, Transformers for Rec is part of NVIDIA Merlin. So Merlin is our broader recommender systems framework, and that includes uh, concepts like MB Tabular, which allows you to do feature engineering and pre-processing. Um, and it also includes trait and inference server, which allows you to do sort of production level inference, including the sort of the, the pre-processing and feature engineering. So we're designing this to not just be accessible to researchers, but also usable by industry practitioners. Um, and we're going through lots of iteration and, and continuing to develop this library. So now I'm gonna hand it off to Gabrielle um, to talk about some of the research that we did with this library, you know, after developing it, there's, there's a, a lot of interesting questions you can answer within the, the, within the space of, of transformers within the context of recommender systems. Yeah, hello all. Um, I, walk you, I walk you through our research questions. Uh, can you hear me? Just confirming. Loud and clear. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so our research question will talk about um, whether can transformer architectures be used for providing accurate recommendations for the session-based recommendation test, right? Because the seminar works on on transformers uh, work at Fox more on sequential recommendation or have longer sequences. So we wanted to explore that. Second, we want to understand whether um, if we take the same transformer architecture, whether if we train uh, it with different training approaches, for example, causal language modeling, masked language modeling, what would be the effect, the performance of the recommendation? And finally, we also investigate here the, the effect of adding side information and what would be effective ways to, to integrate like IT metadata, user context, and so forth. So this is the focus of our empirical analysis. As baselines, we took uh, the session, some session KNN based algorithms, which have been shown to be very effective in our recent uh, empirical analysis involving 12 algorithms and eight data sets. And they were able to beat uh, algorithms like proof of rec, like NARM and STEMP for an SR GNN for many, uh, for many data sets. So we chose those top three algorithms from there. And as neural baselines, we used the proof of rec, the latest version, which is based on RNNs. And we also included the group which um, trained within our trans our transformer for rec framework but and we just replaced the transformer blocks by blue layers so that we can isolate the benefits of the framework versus the architecture itself uh, regarding transformer architectures there are more than six or seven uh, different transformer architectures in the hug face library so we chose five uh, of them because they are both popular and because they are trained with different training approaches, so they would provide a, a good representation here, namely GPT-2, BERT, Transformer, XL, XMLAT, and Electron. Jump right into the results. Uh, we have chosen four data sets, so two e-commerce data sets, which are represent, represented in the columns, and two news data sets. From our knowledge, this is the first work exploring Transformers for news recommendation. And we see in the table, uh, the shaded items are, are the baselines, and we have the best baseline underlined, right? So we can see that in terms of hit rate, it's, it's like recall when you have one relevant item only, which is the case here. We have the KNN maps performing uh, reasonably well, while for, while for uh, in terms of NDCG, which was the metric we have used in our hyper tuning, right? And it's more fine grained, as you know. So group of performed better for the for the e-commerce uh, data sets. And in terms of transformers, in general, we were able to achieve almost 90% of improvement with the best transformer compared to the best uh, baseline architecture, which is good, and not that much uh, improvement compared for the new data sets. Right? Uh, a specific characteristic here is that the news the e-commerce data sets we chose uh, have more sessions per day and also have a longer session, a little bit longer session, so that might be the reason. And just a, a remark that all algorithms were trained incrementally and the evaluation is also performed incrementally. And these numbers, reported numbers are the average over time for all those algorithms. For commerce data sets, we have used a sliding window of one day. And for the new data sets, a sliding window of one hour. 
for both incremental training and evaluation. Yeah, jumping into the, the second research question, we, we would like to compare the effect of training the same transformer architecture with different training approaches, right? Namely, causal language modeling, masked language modeling, permutation language modeling, and replacement token detection. We don't have time here to go into details on those NLP training tasks, but you can see that in the paper. So we chose the XLNet architecture to be the baseline here. Um, its original training approach is the, is the permutation language modeling, PLM. And we can see from the results that the, in general, for all data sets, when we train XLNet with MLM and RTP, we're able to get better scores. Which is very interesting, right? It was not the original training approach, but it's performing better, right? And in particular, XLNet with RTP performs the best for, in terms of NSG for other sets, except for the last one, but very close to the best results. So that could be a, a good default choice if you don't know which architectures you could start with. Uh, you, you could try this XLNet with RTD. And to our knowledge, this is the first time XLNet was used with RTD. And maybe that's because for NLP, the sequences are longer than for session-based. So maybe for shorter sequence in NLP, that combination might be fruitful. And this is one of the of the points of having this bridge, right? We can we can share uh, empirical results and learnings uh, by by having this integration between hugging face transformers and transformers for X. And on the bottom, you can see that uh, overall for the converted sets, we are now over 40, 14% improvement on, in terms of NDCG. And for the U2s, we are over we are almost 10% better than than the best baseline, which is very interesting. In terms of research question three, uh, in general, we see research on sequential session-based recommendation using only the sequence of ITIN IDs, so just the ITIN ID feature. And we wanted to understand what would be the effect of adding additional features, right? And we added simple features like uh, hour of the day, the product category, so that type of simple features, which can be either categorical or numerical. And we, we, we use it two different approaches for to combine the features. One was simple concatenation, and the other was element-wise merge, in which we do element-wise sum of all embeddings, or, and except for the item in the ID, which we do element-wise multiplication. And here we have the results. So we chose the XLNet MLM as baseline here, as it's, it was the fastest one to, to run. And for each of those numbers, I have run 100 trials uh, for of hypertuning, so it took some time. We can see that in general, we the concatenation approach was better, better than element-wise. In particular, the second one with concat merge plus soft one hot encoding, which is a cool technique that has been proposed to represent continuous features as weighted average uh, of embeddings. And yeah, this this thing uh, seems a promising approach to to be used for hybrid or for recommendation, session-based recommendation that leverages site information. And now we've got over over 4.72% of improvement on the e-commerce and compared to the baselines and more than 2% improvement on new data set. And those are just simple features. So um, we have also used the Transformers Rack library for in, in two recent competitions this year on, for session-based recommendation. The first one by Booking.com on predicting the next city of a mood trip, uh, mood destination trip, and the second one on recommending the next product. And we have won both competitions by using Transformers for acting the solution. So that shows us that uh, that gives us some confidence that this this library is very effective to provide relevant recommendations. So as a conclusion, we have introduced in the paper uh, a review uh, on the, the this history of the influence of NLP into the Rexis field. We have introduced the Transformers Rack library as a bridge between NLP and Rexis research on sequential and session-based recommendation. And we have delivered uh, a comprehensive empirical analysis using transformer architectures for, for session-based recommendation. So just a remark, we're gonna have, if you wanna know more about Transformers Rack, we're gonna have a break right after this session, and yeah, we have another another uh, meetup on on Thursday, and we also are, are going to be presenting a demo 
in a tutorial, a full tutorial of end-to-end -end session based recommendation on GPU, where we're going to show how to pre-process and how to deploy models with uh, trained with Transformers Rack. And that's all. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to thank you very much for this great talk. Uh, we have now a couple of questions from the audience. Um, first one, um, is there an analysis as to how much session data would be required for this to work better than, sim than simpler algorithms like session nearest neighbor? So is the question regarding to the how, 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 how large should be the data? Uh, so in this case, yeah. we, we have used incremental training, so that means that we keep tra training and fine tuning the model only with daily data. Uh, if you look, for example, for the YouTube data set, which covers six months, we, we can divide like uh, the six million sessions we have there. So for a month, we have about one million sessions that data set. So not that much for uh, a production uh, scenario. So yeah. The, the, the number of sessions we found usually found in uh, public data are usually small. Uh, yeah. The length of those sessions was quite small as well. Like we were yeah. specifically looking at shorter sessions in this context. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe we have time for one more question. Um, so a question by Wojtek. Uh, can you provide more details on the, to uh, the tokenization process? So in this case, uh, for NLP, you have to tokenize the words into sub words, right? And then you use those to the sequence, that sequence of token IDs to, to do sequential uh, language modeling. In this case, we treat each item as a, an, an element of the sequence. So there is no, not really a tokenization here. You just leverage the sequence of item IDs or the sequence of uh, interaction embeddings, right? To literally add additional features. But yeah, we don't have tokenization here. We don't play you can with think of the combination. Yeah, you can think of the combination of the side information as tokenization, maybe. And in that case, you know, we've explored two options where we're, you know, we're concatenating all the side information on, or in, in another, we're aggregating it together. Um, and, and you can see the paper for, for the, the, the three methods that we explored. Okay. Um, I would like to thank you again for the present and um, I would like to encourage you to, to continue the discussion online um, in the questions and answers. Thank you very Wonderful. much. Thank you. Thank you.